What's going on guys, we're in your trade sim video today, the night before NHL 21 comes out. I want to give you guys my thoughts on the Josh Anderson for Max Domi trade. I um, went down yesterday, but with the draft and everything, just didn't have a chance to make this video. Um, personally, I put out a tweet, I think Columbus stole Max Domi here. When I first heard about the trade, I thought Josh Anderson and a third round pick for Max Domi. I think Columbus wins it, but not terrible. Then I heard it was actually Columbus who got Domi and the third round pick, which is pretty insane. Um, Josh Anderson, I do think, is a good player. He's one of the young power forwards in the NHL. But um, if you look at last year, I know he had injury problems and stuff, but he didn't do a whole lot for me. Now, uh, the year before that, I think he did have 20 or 25 goals. I'll take a look here. 27 goals. Okay, so clearly Montreal making this trade, hoping they get the 18-19 version of Josh Anderson and not the 19-20. But... In game, you can see 25 years old, 80 overall, medium top six. Uh, he's an RFA just like Max Domi. I'll need a new contract. I'm thinking they give him a bridge, something like two and a half to three million on a two year deal. Um, 80 overall, I think in NHL 19, he was an 82. Uh, but again, he came down due to you know his bad play slash injuries this year. Max Domi, on the other hand, could play center or wing, a bit more versatile. 24 years old, so a year younger, 85 overall, medium top six, same potential, five overall higher, also an RFA. And he actually just got signed. Um, I'll have to bring up cap friendly here. I want to say five and a half million dollars a year on a two-year deal, uh, five point three million, and yeah, on a two-year deal. So I think Anderson gets something similar, but um, a bit cheaper. And like I was saying, guys, I think Max Domi one from one is just the better player than Josh Anderson. So the fact that the Blue Jackets are also getting a third-round pick with him is pretty insane. I mean, in game five overall higher, like that's quite significant. Eighty-two and eighty-five does have the same potential, but uh, just a better player all around. You look at his stats there. I think Anderson does have a pretty good shot, and in real life, you know, might have a slightly better shot than Domi, but uh, I think Domi's just better kind of everywhere else, other than, of course, you know, the physical traits. And you look at Domi's stats here, even if Montreal gets the 18-19, Anderson who had 27 goals, Domi had 28 with 44 assists for 72 points. I mean, just a much better player, a year younger. I know he doesn't have, like, you know, the physical play that Anderson has, but um, still, I feel like, honestly, for Domi, it should have been probably Anderson plus a second, at least the third round pick should be on um, Columbus's side. So uh, the fact it's Domi and a third round pick is crazy to me. So if you look at the trade value here, it's not even close. Josh Anderson for Domi and a third. Um, Domi and a third to have quadruple, if not like quintuple the value of Anderson. Medium difficulty, even if it's on easy, that trade's never going through. Now to the trade guys, here's what the Blue Jackets lines could look like. Texier, Dubois, Borchen on the top line. You got Atkinson, Domi, and Nyquist there on the second. Jenner, Wenberg, Felino on the third. Dubinsky, Nash, and Shore on the fourth. Also too, they just signed Gregor Ranko, who's gonna be playing for them in the 2020-2021 season. Now the thing is, um, with the Domi signing, I think they have, let me look at it, like one and a half million dollars in cap space, or 1.7, and Dubois still needs a contract. So I'm thinking he gets at least six, probably in the six to seven range. They're gonna have to trade somebody. I feel like Wenberg will probably be that guy. Um, 4.9 million, if they trade him, they basically have enough for Dubois. Um, two at that point, you know, Greg Aranko, Felino, Jenner, any of those guys could be the third line center for them. Uh, bringing in Domi, I think basically allows them to make that Wenberg trade. Now I saw some people say they'll actually buy Wenberg out, but I think there's enough teams with cap space like Detroit, like Ottawa. Uh, you can definitely trade Wenberg. Like if I'm Detroit, I would take a chance on Wenberg. Uh, what is he making? 4.9 million for three more years. I would take a chance on that, 24 years old for third round pick. Like, you know, definitely I think they don't need to buy him out, but um, it'll be interesting to see how they clear the cap. And right here, guys, you have your first look at Max Domi as he comes Blue Jacket. Honestly, doesn't look too bad. And we're not gonna try to trade from Montreal's perspective. Obviously, this is gonna go through. Uh, not only is it way more value on Montreal's side, but uh, Columbus actually wants Domi and the third round pick as well. What are they gonna say here? It's cheering in the streets. Yeah, I agree with that wholeheartedly. I think, again, uh, Columbus stole Max Domi. I really think, like, I don't really get the third round pick. Like, uh, Bergevin must have called and said, I'll give you a Domi for Anderson. And then, like, the balls on uh, Kekalainen to say, ah, I'll throw in a third round pick as well. Because I would be saying yes immediately on that one. And to that trade, guys, just an updated look at Montreal's forward group. You got Tatar, Deneau, and Gallagher on the first line. Anderson probably playing on the second line with Suzuki and Duran. I think Suzuki could honestly even take over that one seed role. Uh, Lekkinen, Kokinemi, Armia. I know Kokinemi's looking to have a bit of a breakout year this year. He's got to prove why he was third overall pick. Uh, Wheel, Paling, Byron on the fourth line isn't too bad either. Um, quickly, too, I'll actually show you guys what Anderson looks like as a Montreal Canadian. And then after that, I wanted to also uh, just kind of go through um, some of the other trades that happened. I think Matt Murray, the Ottawa Senators, is a big trade. Uh, they get back a second round pick. So, um, Pittsburgh obviously didn't have a lot of draft capital, but then I think with that second round pick, they took a goalie. So 
I mean, Tristan Jerry's 25 years old. I thought that was a bit strange. Like, I thought he was their goalie. They're taking a goalie. I don't know. It's a weird one. But basically, I want to go through some of the smaller trades and just kind of quickly look at the uh, values in-game. Doesn't really look like Josh Anderson, not going to lie. But uh, there's your first look at him as a Montreal Canadian. So, uh, next guy, like I said, just going to go through some of the other deals that happened and see whether or not they would go through in-game. So, next year, guys, I'm combining a couple trades the Wild made with the Sharks. The first was Ryan Donato for a third-round pick, which was really interesting as they traded Charlie Coyle for Donato in a third, and that was like a year ago. Already, they're flipping him for a third-round pick. On um, the Sharks, that was actually the Penguins' third-round pick they got for Patrick Marlowe, who they signed for free. So, really good deal, I think, for the Sharks. Essentially, they get Donato for free. Patrick Marlowe's like 40 years old or whatever. Donato's 23. They get him for nothing, essentially, like the way it works out. Uh, great pickup, I think, for the Sharks. The Wild, I guess, just gave up on them. Plus, they do have a lot of depth at forward with kind of mid-six guys like Donato. Uh, so I think it makes sense to move on from one of them. Then Dubnik here. This is strange to me. I know he's got one year left. Didn't have the greatest season last year. But retained 50% at a seventh-round pick. All you get back is a 2022 fifth. I mean, I think Dubnik definitely could rebound. Like, it's one bad year. I don't know. So the Sharks... In total, get Donato, Dubnik at 50% in the 7th for a 3rd and 5th round pick. And again, they got the 3rd for Patrick Marlowe, who they signed for free. So basically, they get all that for a 5th. The Sharks needed depth. I think it's a great trade for them. Uh, you can see the value there. Quadruple um, on the wild side. So the Sharks, for sure, are going to say yes to that. Kakanu, we just called up. Going to fight, I think, with Staylock uh, for the starting role. And like I mentioned... Um, I think the Sharks need a depth, so Donato definitely helps them there. And then in terms of goaltending, Aaron Dell is going to free agency. Jones, you know, was shaky last year, so I think between Dubnik and Jones, you just play the hot hand. One of them should be good for the Sharks. And then again, I think Donato should find a role somewhere on the third, maybe even second line. And the Wild weren't done there, guys. The next trade they made was another one I really don't get. I thought they lost both Sharks trades, and I feel like they lose this trade to Predators as well. Uh, they gave up Luke Coonan and a fourth-round pick. For Nick Benino, a second and a third. Uh, it's a double second rounder, so it was a bit higher. And then it's actually their third round pick coming back. But Luke Kunin is like a young player, 21 years old. Uh, in game, you can see 79 overall, fourth line forward, medium top six role. Was 15th overall pick back in 2016. Uh, Nick Benino is 10 years older, 81 overall, so in game a couple higher. Third line role, top six potential. But like you look at their stats this year, uh, Benino had 35 points in 67 games. Kunin had 31 in 63 Basically identical, but Kunin's 10 years younger, which explains why the Predators are adding a second round pick. As well, they have a third round pick on their side, and then of course Minnesota sending back a fourth. So I mean, Kunin, you know, hasn't quite developed out of a bomb six role yet, but I think like the chances of that second rounder being as good as Kunin, it's slim. Again, as I mentioned, the Wild did have a lot of depth at forward. Uh, he was going to need a new contract, so maybe they just didn't want to pay him. Benito. 4 million bucks, so the Predators also shed a bit of cap, which is the main reason why I feel like this trade's a win for the Predators, as they not only shed some cap trading away Benino, they also get a good young player back in Kunin. I just feel a team like Minnesota shouldn't be trading away good young talent, so uh, I'll see what happens here. The value is actually pretty equal, I have it on medium difficulty, and Nashville does reject. That's a little interesting, as in-game EA feels like Minnesota got the better deal, and again, I do think this one's a bit more fair than the two Sharks trades, but I still like it for Nashville, just shedding some cap there with Benino, bringing in Kunin. I was actually looking at what the Predators' lines might look like for next year. You still got Forsberg, Johansson, Arvidsson as your first line. And they're actually projecting both Tolvanen and Tomasino to make the team on the second line through Shane. Uh, third line, you'll still have Yarncroc and Kunin. Uh, you got Watson, Season still. Like, uh, they still got a lot of depth there. So I'm going to force this trade through and show you guys what the Wilds' lines might be looking like. Uh, I've already added Bukestad. Of course, we just made the Sharks trade. So uh, the Wilds are definitely going to be an interesting team. Um, I feel like... I don't know if I'd say they're tanking, but it just seems like they're definitely trying to shake up the roster. So like I was mentioning, guys, the Wild have definitely been the most active team this offseason. They've already made four or five significant trades. On top of the three we just put through, they got Bukestad essentially for free from Pittsburgh at 50%. Also, they traded Eric Stahl for Marcus Johansson. So looking at the roster here for next year, this is what it kind of might look like. You got Prize on the first line with Eric Sinek, Fiala, uh, Kaprizov with Johansson, Zuccarello, Greenway, Benino, Bukestad. Hartman, Rask, and Felino. Um, obviously, two missing from here is Miku Koivu, who they said they're not bringing back. He's still not sure if he's going to retire. Also, I'm pretty sure Alex Galchenyuk is going to go to free agency. I see a team like Ottawa, Detroit, willing to take a risk on him, pay him some money. So their offense is looking a lot different with four new faces there in Johansson, Kaprizov, Bustad, and Nino. But then their defense, they've actually kind of done a different story. Their top four is locked up long term. Suter, Dumba, Spurgeon starts his like seven by seven million dollar deal this season, and Brodeen just signed for like seven million bucks as well. Uh, his kicks in the season after this one. So top four is locked up. 
Um, you got Hunt and Susie on the bottom pair. Susie actually just signed like three-year deal at two and a half million or something, which seems like a lot for him. I don't know. And then of course goaltending, the run with Staylock and Kakinen. So uh, while they're definitely a team that's going to be interesting to watch, see you know kind of how all these trades shake out. And as you guys look at the Pittsburgh Ottawa trade that sent Matt Murray to the Senators, initially I thought the value for Matt Murray was like a couple second round picks, and they got pretty close to that here. Uh, they got the second round pick from Columbus via Ottawa, as well they got Gruden here, decent prospect. I uh, 19 years old, 65 overall, medium top nine, was a fourth rounder back in 2018 place for the London Knights, so you know he's going to be developed well. And I feel like the reason they might have gotten slightly less value here is the fact that everyone knew they were trying to trade Matt Murray. Also, the free agency market for goalies is pretty big. Markstrom might be there. Hope he's going to be there. Lungfist is there. I'm um, pretty sure there's a couple people I'm missing that are going to be there. Uh, Flurry, not a free agent, but Vegas already said they're willing to trade Flurry at 50%. I thought Flurry actually might go to the Sanders because he's close to his hometown, but uh, Matt Murray, I think, is a much better pickup for the Sanders. Younger, 25, or I guess real life, 26 years old. Um, in game, you can see 86 overall, medium elite. Um, even at 84 overall, medium starter, that's just a huge upgrade in net for the Sanders. Plus, he's young. A big reason why the Penguins won those back to back cups. I feel like so many teams just don't have patience with their goaltenders. Like Minnesota gave up on Dumnik already. He's older, he's only got one year left, but still, Murray's younger. Now, with Pittsburgh, they have Jerry right behind him, who's similar age. Uh, they already got him signed for, I think, probably cheaper than what Matt Murray wanted. If you can play similar, I think it makes more sense for them just because they are so close to the cap. And then you have the Smith as well, who I think is definitely a capable backup. So it made sense they wanted to move on from one of them. Overall, honestly, I think it's a good trade for both teams. In game, though, EA feels like Ottawa definitely got the better deal. And if I did have to pick a team, I think Ottawa for sure wins this one just because you're getting the more established player in Matt Murray. And I think, like I said, Ottawa's rebuilding. Good young goalie to build around now in Matt Murray. He's got young defense in front of him and Thomas Shabbat, Eric Brandstrom. Uh, Lassie Thompson maybe even makes a team next year. Zaitsev, Lejoie. Look at their forwards too. If you guys are kind of cap friendly, they have like three guys under contract for next year. It's Brady Kachuk, it's Colin White, and then I think it's like Artem Anisimov. Now, all these guys you're seeing here in the AHL probably have a good chance to make the team. Formanton, Norris, Batherson, Brown, Abramov. Uh, Duclair, they actually didn't qualify, which is quite surprising. So uh, he'll be going somewhere new in free agency. But like I said, uh, between the two teams, pretty fair, but I do give the edge to Ottawa. Uh, also, too, like I mentioned, Pittsburgh already made the pick, and they actually took a goalie, which I thought was strange because Jerry, like I said, is 25. thought they would have taken a forward or defenseman. So I'm going to see if I can actually uh, pull up the guy they took. And here he is, guys, Joel Blomqvist, taking 52nd overall by the Penguins with the second round pick they got from the Senators. As you can see, he's 52 overall, medium starter. So he is a decent goalie prospect. I just find it strange for them taking a goalie there after trading away Murray because you have Jerry, who's pretty young, your goalie of the future. I feel like they could have went with a skater, but who knows? Maybe the goalie there was the best player available in their mind, regardless of position, in which case, you know, fair enough. And the last significant trade that went down, guys, was the New York Rangers trading Elias Anderson, the LA Kings, for a second round pick. Uh, it's actually Vegas' second round pick, and they ended up taking Will Cooley with that pick. Spitfire, I think he's a pretty good player. Probably not as good as Anderson though, so I feel like LA definitely wins this one. Thing is, Anderson was holding out in Finland, so they didn't really have a lot of options here. Former seventh overall back in 2017, once slid with Sweden, of course. You know, everyone knew about him after throwing away the medal, but still a good prospect in my mind. I'm thinking they probably just wanted to move on from him and kind of all the drama after getting Lafreniere first overall. Don't know where to worry about this, and I kind of respect it. Like, move on. They got a second round pick. Everyone was saying how he's probably going to go for a second round pick just because everyone knew he's going to get traded, whatever else. The one's going to give up a first for him. So I think they make up pretty good. I think LA makes up really good, especially if Anderson, you know, can reach his potential. So in game, obviously, yeah, LA does win this. But because of all the real life factors, I think it's actually a pretty fair trade for both teams. Kind of cool too how um, the other guy holding on Finland, Jesse Pugliarvi, actually just came back to the Oilers, signed a two-year deal. I'm guessing new GM, new coach, I believe, you know, just feeling better about the team. So hopefully, you know, he can play well, whether it's with McDavid, with Troy. So I'm a pretty big Pugliarvi fan. Obviously, he had an awesome World Junior with Finland um, back here in his draft year. I think he still got a lot of game there. So um, hopefully for both these guys, you know, they can have a bit of a resurgence as they think they're both good players. But that was it, guys, uh, for the trades. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I know it's a bit of a longer one. We want to cover all that for you. Tomorrow's NHL 21. So can't wait for that. <laughs>